All right, the next one is write the factor form across real and complex numbers. So, you know, basically when we're factoring like a problem like this, we just want to factor it, right? So, you know, here we can have y is equal to x minus three times x plus one, right? What two numbers multiply to give you negative three, add to give you negative two, voila. Now the second example, you know, we can see that this is non-factorable across real numbers. So we basically want to be able to figure out um, what the, you know, what the irrational or complex numbers are going to be that we can write this. And again, that we can write this as a product. So a couple ways to understand this. If, you know, when we're looking into like finding the roots or the zeros of this equation, you know, we'd set this equal to x and then we'd have x minus three times x plus one. And there we can set each one equal to zero. So therefore, x is gonna equal three and x is equal to negative one, right? So the important thing though, is we can find the roots or the solutions or the zeros, and then we can rewrite it back in factored form. We can write them as their factors on your product. So since this one is not obvious what the factored form is, or at least I'm not seeing any two numbers that multiply to give you five, add to give you negative two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the solutions and then write the factors from the solutions. So to find the solutions, I'll set this equal to zero and I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is going to be opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus four times a times c, all over two times a. All right, so let's see here. This becomes four, that becomes a uh, negative 20. So four minus 20 is gonna be negative 16 divided by two. Obviously you cannot take the square root of a negative number, but you can see, but we can use our real number system here. So therefore, or sorry, complex number system here, and that's going to be a 4i divided by two. Divide that two into both terms here, and I'm gonna get a one plus or minus two i. So my zeros, right, just kind of like here, is going to be x equals one plus two i, and x equals one minus two i. So if I have my zeros and I wanna write them as factors, I'm just gonna set them equal to zero. And this is something that we are actually gonna work on tomorrow in my class. So that's why I thought this would be a great problem for me to work on. Okay, so now those are the factors. And if I have the factors, I can just write my polynomial in factor form. So the product of my factors or the factored form here across imaginary or complex numbers would be x minus one plus two i. Okay, so it's not as easy. I'm, a, I'm assuming majority of you cannot think of that as the factored form when you're looking at that equation. So you couldn't find the solutions though and kind of work backwards. And that's kind of the important idea here because obviously it'd be nice if we could just factor it, you know, right? But when you're dealing with irrational or complex numbers, a lot of times the easier thing is to find those solutions and then rewrite them back in factored form.